Yashar Jasher 88. And it was after the death of Moshe that Yahuwah said to Yahusha, the son of Nun, saying, Rise up and pass the Yardan to the land which I have given to the children of Yashar'el, and you shall make the children of Yashar'el inherit the land. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread shall belong to you, from the wilderness of Lebanon unto the great river, the river of Parat, shall be your boundary. No man shall stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moshe, so will I be with you. Only be strong and of good courage to observe all the Torah which Moshe commanded you. Turn not from the way, either to the right or to the left, in order that you may prosper in all that you do. And Yahusha commanded the officers of Yashara'el, saying, Pass through the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare for yourselves provisions, for in three days more you will pass the Yardan to possess the land. And the officers of the children of Yashara'el did so, and they commanded the people, and they did all that Yahusha had commanded. And Yahusha sent two men to spy out the land of Yeriko. And the men went and spied out Yeriko. And at the end of seven days, they came to Yahusha in the camp and said to him, Yahuwah has delivered the whole land into our hand and the inhabitants thereof are melted with fear because of us. And it came to pass after that, that Yahusha rose up in the morning, and all Yashara'el with him. And they journeyed from Shittim, and Yahusha, and all Yashara'el with him, passed the Yardan. And Yahusha was 82 years old when he passed the Yardan with Yashara'el. And the people went up from the Yardan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped in Gilgal at the eastern corner of Yericho. And the children of Yashara'el kept the Pichach in Gilgal, rather Gilgal, in the plains of Yericho, on the fourteenth day at the month, as it is written in the Torah of Moshe. And the manna ceased at that time on the morrow of the Pichach. And there was no more manna for the children of Yashara'el. And they ate of the produce of the land of Canaan. And Yericho was entirely closed against the children of Yashara'el. No one came out or went in. And it was in the second month, on the first day of the month, that Yahuwah said to Yahusha, Rise up, behold, I have given Yeriko into your hand with all the people thereof, and all your fighting men shall go round the city, one each day. Thus shall you do for six days. And the priests shall blow upon shofars, and when you shall hear the sound of the shofar, all the people shall give a great shouting that the walls of the city shall fall down. All the people shall go up, every man against his opponent. And Yahusha did so according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. And on the seventh day, 
they went round the city seven times, and the priests blew upon shofars. And at the seventh round, Yahusha said to the people, Shout, for Yahuwah has delivered the whole city into our hands. Only the city and all that it contains shall be accursed to Yahuwah. And guard yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make the camp of Yasharael accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and brass and iron shall be consecrated to Yahuwah. They shall come into the treasury of Yahuwah. And the people blew upon shofars and made a great shouting, and the walls of Yericho fell down. And all the people went up, every man straight before him, and they took the city and utterly destroyed all that was in it, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. And they burned the whole city with fire. Only the vessels of silver and gold and brass and iron they put into the treasury of Yahuwah. And Yahusha swore at that time, saying, Cursed be the man who builds Yariko. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son, Shall he set up the gates thereof? And Achan, the son of Karmi, the son of Yavdi, rather Zavdi, the son of Zarach, son of Yahuda, dealt treacherously in the accursed thing, and he took of the accursed thing and hid it in the tent. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yasharael. And it was after this, when the children of Yashara'el had returned from burning Yarikho, Yahusha sent men to spy out also Ai and to fight against it. And the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned, rather spied out Ai, and they returned and said, Let not all the people go up with you to Ai. Only let about 3,000 men go up and smite the city. For the men thereof are but few. And Yahshua, rather Yahusha, did so. And there went up with him of the children of Yashara'el about 3,000 men. And they fought against the men of Ai. And the battle was severe against Yashara'el. And the men of Ai smote 36 men of Yashara'el. And the children of Yashara'el fled from before the men of Ai. And when Yahusha saw this thing, he tore his garments and fell upon his face to the ground before Yahuwah. He, with the elders of Yashara'el, and they put dust upon their heads. And Yahusha said, Why, O Yahuwah, did you bring this people over the Yardan? What shall I say after Yashara'el has turned their backs against their enemies? Now, therefore, all the Canaanim, inhabitants of the land, will hear this thing and surround us and cut off our name. And Yahuwah said to Yahusha, Why do you fall upon your face? Rise, get you off, for Yashara'el has sinned and taken of the accursed thing. I will no more be with them unless they destroy the accursed thing from amongst them. And Yahusha rose up and assembled the people and brought the Urim by the order of Yahuwah. And the tribe of Yahuda was taken, and Akan, the son of Karmi, was taken. And Yahusha said to Akan, Tell me, my son, what have you done? And Akan said, I saw amongst the spoil a goodly garment of Shinar, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. I coveted them and took them, 
Behold, they are all hid in the earth in the midst of the tent. And Yahusha sent men who went and took them from the tent of Akan, and they brought them to Yahusha. And Yahusha took Akan and these utensils and his sons and daughters and all belonging to him, and they brought them into the valley of Akor. And Yahusha burned them there with fire. And all Yashara'el stoned Akan with stones, and they raised over him a heap of stones. Therefore did he call that place the Valley of Akor. So Yahuwah's anger was appeased. And Yahusha afterward came to the city and fought against it. And Yahuwah said to Yahusha, Fear not, neither be dismayed. Behold, I have given into your hand Ai, her king and her people. And you shall do unto them as you did to Yericho and her king, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey for yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Yahusha did according to the word of Yahuwah, and he chose from amongst the sons of war 30,000 valiant men. And he sent them, and they lay in ambush for the city. And he commanded them, saying, When you shall see us, we will flee before them with cunning, and they will pursue us. You shall then rise out of the ambush and take the city. And they did so. And Yahusha fought. And the men of the city went out toward Yashedael, not knowing that they were lying in ambush for them behind the city. And Yahusha and all Yashedael feigned themselves wearied out before them. And they fled by the way of the wilderness with cunning. And the men of Ai gathered all the people who were in the city to pursue Yashedael. And they went out and were drawn away from the city. Not one remained, and they left the city open and pursued Yashedael. And those who were lying in, in ambush rose up out of their places and hastened to come to the city and took it and set it on fire. And the men of Ai turned back, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to the skies. And they had no means of retreating either one way or the other. And all the men of Ai were in the midst of Yashara'el, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them so that not one of them remained. And the children of Yashara'el took Milosh, king of Ai, alive, and they brought him to Yahusha. And Yahusha hanged him on a tree. And he died. And the children of Yashara'el returned to the city after having burned it. And they smote all those that were in it with the edge of the sword. And the number of those that had fallen of the men of Ai, both man and woman, was 12,000. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city they took to themselves, according to the word of Yahuwah to Yahusha. And all the kings on this side of the Yardan, all the kings of Canaan, heard of the evil which the children of Yashara'el had done to Yericho and to Ai, and they gathered themselves together to fight against Yashara'el. Only the inhabitants of Givan were greatly afraid of fighting against Yashara'el, lest they should perish. So they acted cunningly. And they came to Yahusha and to all Yashara'el and said unto them, We have come from a distant land. Now therefore cut a covenant with us. And the inhabitants of Givan overreached the children of Yashara'el. And the children of Yashara'el cut a covenant with them. And they made peace with them. And the princes of the assembly swore unto them. But afterward, 
the children of Yashereel knew that they were neighbors to them and were dwelling amongst them. But the children of Yashereel slew them not, for they had sworn to them by Yahuwah, and they became hewers of wood and drawers of water. And Yahusha said to them, Why did you deceive me to do this thing to us? And they answered him, saying, Because it was told to your servants all that you had done to all the kings of the Amorim. We were greatly afraid of our lives, and we did this thing. And Yahusha appointed them on that day to hew wood and to draw water. And he divided them for slaves to all the tribes of Yashereel. And when Adani Sedech, king of Yusharim, heard all that the children of Yashereel had done to Yericho and to Ai, he sent to Hoham, king of Shevran, and Piram, king at Yarmut, and to Yafia, king of Lachish, and to Devir, king of Eglan, saying, Come up to me and help me, that we may smite the children of Yashadael and the inhabitants of Givan, who have made peace with the children of Yashadael. And they gathered themselves together, and the five kings of the Emorim went up with all their camps, a mighty people, numerous as the sand of the seashore. And all these kings came and encamped before Givan, and they began to fight against the inhabitants of Givan. And all the people of Givan sent to Yahusha, saying, Come up quickly to us and help us, for all the kings of the Emorim have gathered together to fight against us. And Yahusha and all the fighting people went up from Gilgal, and Yahusha came suddenly to them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. And Yahuwah confounded them before the children at Yashereel, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Givan, and pursued them along the way that goes up to Bayat Koran unto Makeda. And they fled from before the children of Yashereel. And while they were fleeing, Yahuwah sent upon them hailstones from heaven, and more of them died by the hailstones than by the slaughter of the children of Yashereel. And the children of Yashereel pursued them, and they still smote them in the road, going on and smiting them. And when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening, and Yahusha said, in the sight of all the people, Son, stand you still upon Givan, and you moon in the valley of Elan, until the nation shall have revenged itself upon its enemies. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yahusha, and the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and it stood still six and thirty moments. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that, before it or after it, that Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of a man, for Yahuwah fought for Yashara'el.